Wiki Speed August 9th, 2016, Linwood, Washington, United States shop. This is a walkthrough of bolting together a V31 suspension module. Here's a V31 front suspension. First are the heim joints. So you have what's called the suspension mount plate and the A arms. That's step one. So identify your two A arms down here and here. And they have heim joints. Now notice these heim joints, also called spherical rod end bearings go into the suspension mount plate with a washer on each side and a lock nut. Then a, a, lock, a, a nut goes down through with a lock nut. Now there's a washer on top and we don't need a washer on the bottom. But note they go down, because if you had the bolt going up, this would put the arm in a different position, it actually wouldn't fit. Same on the bottom. So the spherical rod end bearings are on the inside of the A-arms. Uh, on the A-arm holes, they're in the very front yeah. hole of the A-arm, in the very rear hole of the A-arm, and the holes they go into on the suspension mount plate are the forward most holes in this row, and one, two, three, four, the fourth hole in the row. Not the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth hole. They're towards the front on the front suspension. So that should get your two A-arms attached. Then attach your two rubber bushing blocks on top and on bottom. A bolt threads through here with a lock nut and a washer on top and bottom. This is the strut top mount. It compresses the, the, the bushing blocks. It connects with any two holes in the top and bottom row of the suspension and it connects in the second and third holes back. You can use any two. You could install all four if you wanted to. Again, there's a washer on in the inside and outside. So now you should have your two A-arms, your two bushing blocks uh, on the top and bottom, and your suspension mount plates that are compressing the bushings. Now to get these attached, you may need to clamp them together to pinch these bushing blocks into their preload so that these bolts line up. You can use either 3 8 bolts, or these will also fit with metric 10 millimeter bolts. You can use either, whichever is uh, easier, more easily available in your location. If you're using 3 8 imperial bolts, you'll want grade 8 bolts. If you're using metric bolts, you'll want a higher grade, but they're also thick enough that even the low grade metric bolts are within the same tensile strength range. Okay, so now you have your A-arms attached with your bushing blocks and your uh, mount and your top mounts and we've explained each bolt. Now we can attach the suspension mount plate to the car. There's going to be a bolt in the uh, outer foremost corners with washers. Now we have a prototype windshield on here. You won't have that part in most other cars so you can ignore this but the bolts are in the same place. You can see they go right through to the chassis. So to tighten the back of them you put a wrench on the inside with a washer on the inside, the lock nut on the inside, and you just reach your arm back with a wrench to get the back holes. They're in the rearmost two holes. And the same on the bottom, and the same on the bottom rear. The rear, let's see if I can get this. There, the rearmost two holes. Same thing. So now you should have your suspension mount plate attached to the car. Now the front of this is flush to the front of your chassis and the bottom of this is flush to the bottom of your chassis. So if you have to even drill these eight holes to attach, that's how you do it. So now you should have a suspension mount plate attached to the car with its arms and bushing blocks. That takes us now to the steering knuckle and the hub carrier. This attachment here is called the knuckle. It's attached to the hub carrier. There's two plates bolted together with these four bolts, which also holds on the hub carrier. Now, I believe this was sent to Hubert Smith's and most of our customers assembled, but to be complete, there's a machined aluminum block here where my finger is, and it has a bearing pressed inside and a circlip holding the bearing in. It then has four bolts that not only hold it together, they also hold these two plates together. These two plates, these diameter circles are differing diameters. Make sure your, um, uh, actually the only way to know which plate is on the inside and which plate is on the outside is connecting an axle in and making sure the axle nose clears. 
Um, and you don't need that unless you're doing four wheel drive on the front, but you can check an axle. Uh, the inner the inner component has the larger diameter circle. The outer component has a smaller diameter circle, so an axle nut, uh, an axle nose will fit. Now, in the front suspension, you take the very front bottom most hole and put your spherical rod and bearing in this way, also called your heim joint. Same with the very forward most top hole. Spherical rod and bearing goes in this way. Then you put a nut going in and a nut going up. So it's exactly a mirror image of what you did on the inside of the uh, A-arm. Now the hole in the A-arm is the middle hole. In fact, there's only one on this outbound A-arm. So of all the holes on the knuckles, it's the most forward, and forward is determined by the steering uh, arm. And then the only hole that's outboard on the A-arm. Now you should have a steering knuckle attached, and it should be attached to the A-arm. That should complete your suspension attachment. Later, you're going to attach a tie rod end, also with a spherical uh, uh, ball end joint, a heim joint, and again, it will go this way. The pivot point has to be on the outside, closest to the brake rotor for the appropriate steering geometry, otherwise you'll get reverse Ackerman. So the pivot is on the outside, which might be counterintuitive. You might want to think of it on the on the inside towards the passenger and driver that will give you reverse Ackerman. So you want the pivot on the outside and going this way. And the bolt will go down to your steering arm. The steering arm, note it curves away from the front of the wheel so the wheel can turn in and not intersect the steering arm. And it connects to, connects to your steering rack like this. So you have this machined piece with two bolts, two bolts with washers connecting, and then a nut on either side of the steering rack. Now you have a suspension assembled connected to the car with a hub carrier on it ready for a wheel and it's connected to your steering rack. Now let's go to the rear suspension. Almost exactly the same. Same attachments to the car, uh, foremost outer bolts, top and bottom. Same attachments for the A-arm, exactly the same. Same uh, strut mount attachments, same bushing block attachments, same heim joint orientations. Here's the difference on the rear. You have two holes for heim joints and they go into the two forward most holes, top and bottom of the steering knuckle. And you don't have a large nose, uh, a, a steering rack arm on the front. Instead, you know what front and back is, the front is flat on your steering knuckle. The rear is C-shaped to attach to your rear brake calipers. You have the same four bolts, they're exactly the same, attaching to your hub carrier. Let's see if I can point them out so you can see. Here, 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 same four bolts. You have your two heim joints. Uh, and here's an even better view of the same steering knuckle block like you saw up front. Again, the larger diameter hole is inboard, the smaller diameter hole is outboard. And now you have assembled your rear suspension and you are all ready on your Wikispeed V31 suspension modules. Go get them.